we will spend a lot of time today talking about Jill, who took so much pleasure in life. And as we talk about our memories of her, as we share them with one another, we will be letting some of that sunshine back into our lives um, and reflecting it off of one another. And this is where I hope we can find happiness together, um, even in a difficult, but it's still, I think, a difficult time. She remained, first and foremost, a professor of history, that is, a scholar and a teacher. We all know her wonderful books, The Medieval Experience, 300 to 1400, that's a wide range. Uh, her more recent book, Sacred Violence, The Crusades to the Middle East, which was published by the University of Toronto Press. What you may not know is that this medieval historian also edited a volume on antiquity. She was indeed very far ranging. Uh, it was called Athenian Democracy Triumph for Travesty. As it happens, this was my first encounter with Jill's work since I used that book when I was a student. Jill was like a grandmother to me. Um, and I know she would hate the fact that I called her a grandmother, but she was the one that really held my hand at this university after my dad passed away. Uh, he passed away the very last day of my freshman year. and. Jill was the one that got me up and convinced me to keep going and convinced me that I still had a, a purpose in one of the darkest moments of my life. Jill was a true Renaissance woman who embraced life with gusto, whether it was acting classes, music concerts and theater, or teaching at NYU in Florence, discovering young artists, exploring new restaurants, or throwing lively dinner parties with Will Medonic, her beloved husband. Jill made her friends feel life is fun. Jill cared deeply about students and teaching and advising, and she had a vision for the college and where it should be and what it could be. She built a team and led it. I saw her disarm powerful opponents with her intelligence, her charm, and her well-thought-out plans. A charismatic, visionary leader, Jill's secret weapon was that she could track details and she understood people. She always said things twice, so she would say, it's so good to see you. I mean, it's so good to see you. So that was, uh, she would always do that. The thing that I remember most about Jill is that even though she really knew more than the rest of us about the period, she never, uh, pulled rank, and she never, she never made us feel uncomfortable about anything that we were saying. The ability to mentor as thoughtfully and effectively, to be a friend as thoughtfully and effectively, and to be as human as Jill is, was, is a product of goodness, and thus it's also a result, and perhaps more importantly, a manifestation of Jill's own merit. At Jill's funeral, someone brilliantly remarked that each of us assembled there thought that we were her best friend. It was actually a very funny and touchy moment as we looked around the room in the Riverside Chapel uh, because it was preposterous and it was so true. She noticed that I was upset and she just followed me out in the hallway after the end of class. I did I didn't want to talk to anyone. I wasn't looking at anyone or anything. And I don't even remember her saying anything to me. She just gave me a really big hug. And that's what I needed. And that was Jill. I knew her as a, a well-turned-out person. I never knew what went into that. I didn't know anything went into that. I thought she was just lucky. When she was dean, Jill met Will Madonic, the love of her life, and she embarked on happier days. Handsome and charming and intelligent, he adored his Jilly, and he bragged about her to everyone. My husband and I invited Jill over to dinner, and we also invited Will. And I had said to Will, uh, perhaps he could introduce Jill to a lot of different people. Uh, because she was very eligible. 
And well, it turned out that that dinner, uh, they walked home together and the rest is history. She was a wonder and very private and very lovely and wanted so much to learn about acting. Beside our professional relationship we have developed over the years, a deep friendship over the years also followed. This friendship was much imbued with the love we both shared, the love of dancing. A combination of adoring apprentice, loving mother, co-conspirator, cheerleader, and confidant. She is simply irreplaceable to me. What I want to say about Jill more than anything is the gift she had of making the people in her life know that they were special and important and loved. Jill always planned a lovely day. She hadn't had the happiest of childhoods. And once she had control of her life, she made it as lovely as possible. Jill loved her family and her friends. She supported each of us, cheered us on, made us laugh, and invariably inspired us to be better versions of ourselves. And we each adored her. Noble, kind, talented, intelligent, beautiful, Jill enchanted all those she met. I wish Jill could be here to see all of the people who have come to celebrate her life and to express all of the love we have for the kind of person she was and the life that she led. But I know that Jill knew how much she was loved. Jill never held back in expressing her own love for the people in her life, inspiring them to do the same. One of the most important things we can learn from her is to tell the people in our lives how much we love them every chance we get. In the last email I have from Jill in my inbox, she wrote, you know, I hope, that I feel so fortunate that you are in my life. I can't imagine what it would be like without you anymore. So there it is, we have each other, always and always, she said. I will have Jill in my heart, always and always. Jill was so good at bringing people together, and here's the remarkable thing, she's doing it still. <laughs>